Hi, my name is Jeff, and today I have the immense pleasure of introducing the man that turns us from a duo into a team. Some people call him the Space Cowboy, and some people call him the Gangster of Love. Sometimes he makes us call him Sir, but today he's going by the name that you all know and love, Mr. Peach. Peachy! <laughs> Yay! Wow, that's an introduction and a half, Jeff. Thanks. I've been for <laughs> welcome to the team, my man. Thanks for having me. Oh, Thanks you're for very having welcome. Me. And you, Pat. Oh. You're right there. Yeah, he's, uh, he's behind the camera. Thanks, man. Slipping out of Spider Man's head. <laughs> Bless Spider Man. <laughs> so, mm. you, um, the searchlights were looking the wrong way, the Rottweilers were barking, but you managed to dig that hole oh, yeah. under the Games Workshop fence. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, on your I had a bike, fifth. jumped another fence, and here you are. I had a fifth tunnel. I didn't have George or Tom, Dick or Harry. I had a fifth one. It was called Peachy. <laughs> the they just didn't look. look. They just didn't look. It was too obvious. So, uh, yeah. It's funny because I was there the other week, and there was just trails, two trails of dirt. They must have been the ones coming out of your pockets. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used it as basing material. <laughs> <laughs> all the bases now just have all the, uh, the yeah. crap from the inside of the tunnels. So, yeah. Yes, so, out. Out, out of workshop. And here. Yeah, weird. It is a weird sensation, I must I must admit, like working for a company for 20 plus years. Yeah, so that's you, 22, 22 years, is it? I thought it was 22. It's nearer, probably somewhere between 21 and 22. Roughly. So, you, how long were you uh, a painter for on, your, on YouTube? Five years. I can go with that with the age of my child, because I left manager of Army Painters to join Duncan, uh, and then I had a child, and I had two weeks off paternity, and it was a terrible idea starting a new job with a newborn whilst so basically... talking to camera not the best decision no. I've ever made in my life but oh, I've had no sleep you know, it was like when I <laughs> I had my first child um, not long ago after after becoming uh, self-employed with the barbershop and um, you know the way barbershop chairs would can, could drop back into a shaving position oh yeah I used to frequently have the chair like that and people would walk past and go, I looked in the shop the other day and it looked like you were asleep. I was going, yes, I probably was. <laughs> I, I, had, I had a meeting I where I fell asleep <laughs> and snored. And Duncan had to nudge me and wake me up. I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, it, was, it was one of these, we used to do like monthly sort of like what's coming out in the next kind of month. Um, it was like monthly product meetings. Yeah, yeah. And Dom Murray, bless him, was working really hard to like get everyone engaged with the new stuff coming out. And I'm just there. <sighs> Like Duncan's like, Peachy, you're falling in the oh, oh. <laughs> Think about it from my point of view. People virtually had to wake me up and do a big loud ahem when they came in. <laughs> and I would wake up and go, oh, anyway, did you say cutthroat razor around you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, not a great move when having a newborn. But no. I think I learned a lot in the first couple of months. So just to so that we're reassured, your wife's not currently pregnant now, is she? I hope not. <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, at fifty years old, I can assure you. Um, <laughs> if she sees her, she'll kill me. <laughs> I, I have to take a run up just to get into bed to go to sleep. So, um, chance of a third child's not happening. I'm not used to this level of conversation on live. Right? Can we can we get back on topic, please? <laughs> well, this is all we are on here. We just talk shite and occasionally a bit of a minute you get to paint. Heresy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Been late off the mark. There. So before you before you moved into um, painting miniatures professionally, mm. you ran a store. Did yes. Well, I, I started in 2001. Um, 2000 2001. It was when the Lord of the Rings kind of hits the yeah, screen. Yeah, well, it was so. even before the Lord of Rings hit the screens because it was like the build-up because the box game had been made and they were looking for extra staff. So I wandered by randomly because I was at uni at the time and uh, I just went in and I was like, oh, this looks cool. And one of the store managers, a guy called Chris Pritchard, he'd been there for ages as a staff member and at that point he was a manager. He was like, have you ever thought about a job? And I was like, ooh, I guess so. I was in hospitality at the time. Yeah. Um, so I was cleaning hotel rooms, which was interesting. If anyone's done it... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a great job. It was. I worked with my mum, so it was fun for that. Yeah, yeah. But there's some. There's some sides. We can talk about that. Later. <laughs> we'll save that for another. <laughs> we'll, save that, we'll save that for your six month review. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll do that. We'll, yeah, I could. Say Patreon. The Patreon <laughs> behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, so I got. I went in. He asked me if I'm interested, and they did an interview, and then I got the job. And I'd never at this point. I'd play games for myself, 
and I'd never taught anyone how to play a game. So I like said to my wife Liz, I was like, can I show you how to play the game? She's like, not really, I'm not that interested. I was like, well, you're stifling my job already, but great. Uh, so I tried to run her through a game, but it didn't, it didn't pan out. What store was that? Derby. That was so, in yeah, Derby. Yeah, that's the game. But it was great because they did all the training with us. Um, yeah. But the very first Saturday, so I'd, I think I'd come in like a couple of days up to that point, but the very first Saturday was Lord of the Rings is out. This is the new game system. I was like, cool. Um, do I get to read the rules? I was like, nope. Doors gonna open in a minute. Just teach me how to play. I was like, I don't even know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, um, my it gets a mention on here from time to time. My good friend Tim, he ran um, one uh, quite a prestigious show, a store in London, mm. and he got the job off the ground off the back of being a really good painter, and uh, he got the job at Hammersmith. He was the yes, Hammersmith yeah, manager. yeah, yeah, and. Um, well, a little while ago, when I got back into 40k after a 12-year break, I said, Jim, do you want to play? And he went, yeah, but I've got to be honest with you. I have no idea how to play 40k. And I went, but I'm sure you told me you used to take the demo games mm. in the shop. He said, yeah, I did. I said, well, how did you do that? He said, I just ramped up the gore and the violence and everything was a four plus on a roll. He said, whether you're an Eldor, Eldor <laughs> or Space Marines. Or he just went, oh, you rolled a four. Yeah, that's three. Yeah. That's past. That's that. I used to call he that said, Peach Hammer because it was like four plus you win. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was it a was good time actually. I remember, remember looking back at that quite fondly, like just teaching Lord, Lord of the Rings early. And I still like, if, if it gets to Christmas time. It's a great time, game. I really it, enjoyed it. I time. would say, and I'm probably going to get completely slated for this there are two that's all right we get tier. slated all the time you just, 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 <laughs> just great videography comments. terrible painting apparently <laughs> i'm gonna to add to that terrible painting don't you worry uh but yes yeah, i'm so, gonna do a whole episode where i just roll fours <laughs> <laughs> what hammer hey. but yeah so it was it was interesting like I, even now like when it comes to christmas i get these sort of like nostalgic vibes of just playing like Weathertop and Minds of Moria because yeah, it was like yeah. always around about Christmas time the new game system came out because it was built up for the, the the film so there was three years of that and I think I was in Derby for well started in 2000 left about 2007 so I was like key time which was part time yeah full time for a couple of years and then got a manager job manager trainer oh oh that was that was an intense sort of program it was like 12 weeks of training yeah um, yeah i remember tim we, go and tell me about going yeah they, they, they don't do it any well to my knowledge it's not one of those things they, they really yeah. do anymore and on my course there was a couple of design studio wannabe managers as well and it was a proper make or break kind of feels like sas who dares wins if you don't <laughs> you hand in your number you ring the bell off you go kind of thing it, it was intense but you have like theory weeks then you have like practical and my store was meadow hall in in sheffield so I'd oh go yeah to, yeah yeah to meadow hall, which is where wade used to work I literally started in Meadowhall the week Wade went off to the studio mm. um, or like a week or two later uh, but that was fun so you learn a lot on hand stuff a lot of theory and then you just re you know keep adding to it but the very last day of your theory is you do a couple of store visits and uh, I think it's written so you fail but you learn and understand the failure oh and it's just like the thing in Star Trek that I've, test, that captain's test. Yes, it's a bit ever. like that. Yeah, so no matter what you do, there's always going to be something they pull out and go, you failed for this reason or you failed for that reason. Um, and you just get shouted at. And there were the, that, that's when you really learn a lot of stuff on, on that. And it just, it, it kind of involves you to go, yep, you can't be perfect every time you make mistakes, you learn from your mistakes. It's, how, it's basically how you deal with a mistake. Yeah. And that was really good. And, you know, I, I did all right. I got the manager course, managed Derby for a couple of years and then the job came up as an army painter. So I went for that. And how did you... How, you see, I understand the the concept of heavy metal painting, and I understand the concept of army painting. Um, but how how rigorous and full on was that? How like you know how many miniatures would you expect to do in you know a day, a week, a month? What would how what would how what would like if you because I would imagine being army painter a lot of that time was for the miniatures that would sit behind yeah. the heroes for the codexes and yeah, things like yeah, that. Yeah. How long were you working in advance of, of, of a codex coming out? And so in that time, it was probably, and I think it's pretty much very similar still now. It's like a, probably up to a year, probably yeah. a bit longer, depending on the, the range and, and the products. But most of the time, it was somewhere between six months to a year, I'd say, because there was stuff we did for White Dwarf as well. Yeah. And White Dwarf had like a six-month sort of print, sort of leeway, so you'd yeah, work yeah. on that, and then it gets sent off for print and stuff. So anywhere between six to six months to a year on average. Um, but the interesting thing was, because when I started, um, they had army painters previously back in the day that like painted regiments and units, yeah. like take the Bretonian army, the heavy metal Bretonian army. And that was, you know, Dave Thomas did a whole load of stuff for that or whatever. Um, 
Karchi, who works in the exhibition team, reminded me he used to do freelance army painting. So they, they had army painters at some point back in the past, but this was the first time we'd actually specifically employed someone to do just painting the back rankers and extra stuff to fill out the army. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I think Dave was heavy metal at the time as well, before he was a sculptor. Um, so it was all new ground to me. It was all new ground to Pete, who was running the, the team at the time. So a lot of it was just playing it by ear. And I think the thing that really helped embolden his decision for doing it was one day he just came with a tray and there was like 140 odd Urukai on it. He's like, can you get these painted by the end of the day? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, by the end of the day. By the end of the day. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do my best. So I just went down the old peachy route. Well, at the time, because we didn't have like yeah. contrast or many shades. No, no. It was spray and black. I'd literally dry brushed everything with uh, scorch brown at the time, yeah, which is yeah. like Rhinox Hyde now. So I dry brushed everything with scorch brown. That was my go to technique for a lot of things because that's the boots and the leathers done. Yeah, yeah. And then I just picked out everything that was silver. I mean, also, that was the skin for the Uruk Hyde. Yeah, as well. yeah. So yeah. everything else that was silver, the, like lights, sort of like tabards or bits of leather because they had like a light leather like loincloths and stuff yeah yeah and we did have washes at that point and i just got ba uh, badder black and just coated it in badder black and devil and mud and then just based them and then it was like oh i've done 140 in a, in a day or 142 to be precise <laughs> i'm not going to cut myself short of two no, fingers. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was just that oh so these are different levels so some of the stuff i did was every metal will do the first five guys in in like a, a warhammer unit so you obviously we used to do rank up units of five 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 so 20 let's say skaven for instance yeah front rank of five would be done by heavy metal and then i'd do the next 15 um and just try and match them as close as i possibly can in like a fraction of the time did it go further like you know like the heavy metal would do the five the first five and then army painters would do x amount behind that and then did eventually like that did like jill an accountant did you do do so <laughs> Although the girl who went to the canteen, did she do her? No, not quite. But that would have been great. <laughs> that one definitely eased up. Put that spatula down, Mary. Get them chips out. And then here's your scheme. That You're doing some rat men's tails today. Oh, not again. Uh, I mean, there was a time when they had the trainees, uh, Heavy Metal, they'd do the second rank. Yeah. Um, just to build up the skills. And I'd just do that. So my work was less, but I still had more units. So if, I know you're not in that department now. I, I, well, you're not now, obviously, but no. you're not in that department <laughs> for the last few years because you've been a YouTube shooter. What would you say, um, like, guys doing, like, Space Marines are currently working at now? What would they be having to do? How many would they be having to do for a codex? So we used to have a rule of two Space Marines a day. Right. Um, so a squad of 10 across a week. And how many guys would be... Uh, what would you say the army painter size is now? Uh, how, many, uh, how many men? Uh, uh, say that again, sorry. How many people would be in the army painter Oh, in the team. Now? So in mine, it was 10. Yeah, uh, but we'd have like multiple projects going off at the same time. Oh, so right. like, if that um, there was a box that came that had Raven Guard and Tau, so a bunch of guys would be doing the Raven Guard, a bunch of guys would be doing Got Tau. Yeah. Someone else would be doing Age of Sigma. Yeah. So we'd like scatter out the work. So we we because at one point it was literally when I was in the team, it was like Empire Army books coming out. Yeah. You do the Empire, and, and I literally do everything, which was like the Empire Army, the stage by stages for White Dwarf the scenery, and maybe some step by step builds of like me making like a Reichland tower or something like that um whereas as we went down the years of working that team more products came out quicker so there was more stuff like nearly every week it wasn't every month the codex came out it was like nearly every couple of weeks there were yeah, new yeah. products then it was like nearly every week there's a new product so that's why you had more army painters you had more work going out in different angles like yeah we've got some 40k stuff here yeah we need to do some stuff for kill team war cry age of signal so by the time the by the time the public got used to the, were aware of this thing coming out you must have been sick of the sight of it yeah <laughs> have you seen that yeah. Like, yeah, as, yeah. As a, from every angle I've seen it from every angle too many I mean yeah. the, the, it's an interesting thing because we did it with the Sisters of the Battle and it was a really I'd like to think an Ironman thing for the for the community to see so as a hobbyist someone that loves miniatures when a range came out so let's take Gene Silicon yeah I've always liked Gene Silicon I got to see all that 18 months before it came out yeah and i was excited when i saw it i was excited when i was painting it then i got depressed because i couldn't touch it for another year or so i'm like well, well, I've i want to play, play this stuff, yeah, yeah yeah i've done the stuff for work but i want stuff for me now yeah and i want to do it but i can't do anything for like 12 months until it's now out so it was like oh and then you forget and then new stuff comes out you get excited by that and then eventually like, oh they're, they're back in the shop oh you know what it's been 12 12 months i'll worry about it later on or whatever so the the good thing um, that from watching your tutorials, as I have done for a number of years now, and then also 
as a peek behind the curtain the work you've been doing in advance of starting with us officially mm, on the yeah, yeah. you still keep a lot of that core army painter mentality yeah, don't you because yeah. i haven't looked at um your process you 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 keep your you your number of paints you keep generally quite low yeah and you're extraordinarily methodical of uh, whereas unlike me i i can paint something in red on a miniature and then wander off into seven different colors and then remember that there's something else that needs to be red on that yeah, miniature yeah, and, come, yeah, yeah. and come back to it but you're so do you think that that at that time as on the as an army painter has really stuck to you in good stead is that you continually keep that mentality about yeah i think out. i had a bit of that when i was in retail because i used to do a lot of stuff for the cabinets yeah um and i paint quite fast which is why i applied for the the army painting job but I, over the years of like working through projects and it being a profession you want to cut as many corners as you can still yeah. make it look as awesome as it possibly can be but also make the process as swift so there's less going back and yeah. touching this bit up and oh I need to apply another colour here oh I've done that colour four times now across this model when I could have just done it once or twice yeah. um, so that that's the thing that and it's a big thing I've always said this to a lot of our folks that have ever watched the channel that we when I was at um, in workshop and stuff test models always do a test model and Every now and again, as a hobbyist, there's a difference between a professional painter and a hobby and just doing it for fun. Sometimes I just paint a figure for fun. Yeah. And I, and I don't follow any of the rules I've written down. I just stick colour on and just go, oh, I really like that bit of silver there. I want a bit of red. Oh, I'll send that bit of red to the hill. But that's also, if I wanted to turn that colour scheme into an army, I've now got that test model and I've worked that process in my head of like, actually, what's easy to do here is spray the whole lot silver, pick out all the gold, yeah. wash everything over the model, then do the red on everything, then do the black, because the black's slightly higher up than the red. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm making the mistakes on, if I did the black first, I'll end up getting some red on the black. And it's, it's that kind of thing where you, you balance out what's easier, what's, and sometimes it might be like there's a, a design on a shield that's gold, but you just want to really heavily paint that shield red. Yeah. And then go, I'll add the extra bit of gold later, because if I'm neatly trying to paint yeah, you, around You know that, you're gonna, you're gonna, screw you're gonna it up yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, that will slow you down. So. Obviously, everybody watching this will know that you're heavily invested in the Games Workshop product, but you also paint and game with other things, don't you? Yeah, so, yeah. Because I know that you do, and you can correct me if, I'm, if there's more to it. I know you do Napoleonics yep. as well, and I also know that you do uh, Star Wars Legion. Yep. What, have you got anything else? Oh, there's loads. Uh, oh, there's I, I made my own game system at one point. Uh, oh, right. A, a spy-fi so, so, sort of game where I, did, I made um, a bunch of... Spies, James Bond based stuff. Yeah, I yeah. can talk about it. James Bond. I like James <laughs> Bond. I've always liked the movies, watched them all. So I made like a set of uh, characters and a set of rules. It was kind of a mix between like a tabletop war game and a bit of role play. Yeah, yeah. And I did it with Duncan and a bunch of mates. And the idea is you, you pick a character and you have like agents and sort of, I guess, minor agents yeah. or, or, or sidekicks, if you like. And most players will have an agent and a sidekick and you have a number of action points that you can do things, a number of skill points which can do things as well, but the action points also act as your wounds. Oh, okay. uh, so when you start taking wounds, you can do less stuff in a game. Right. But the, the rule, the premise of this game was you always win, because it's, it's almost, it's a James Bond well, movie. James Bond, yeah, it'd be horrific it's, if you did Exactly, that. yeah, but it was always about how many henchmen you could take down and how quickly you can do this job and how many of your actual spies so, get taken so out. The, the, the key to the game was flair, really. Yeah, yeah, and I always used to have a, a special thing, like if you wanted to describe something, I learned this from a, a game system called Black Powder, which is what I use for uh, Napoleonics. Yeah. I, did, I don't know if you've ever played Black Powder. No, I'm aware of it. But it's I'm a very it. fun game system. So. I have a Napoleonic army, Duncan's got a Napoleonic army. We ray our army out on the table. And yeah. what you do is it follows the um, Warmaster rule set that came out many years ago. Yeah, yeah, um, I've played Warmaster. Yeah, so it's that you literally give your regiment a command. And like many existence uh, examples of doing this is I would literally have my regiment of like, I don't know, 95th rifles. And I'd be like, they're going to run to that hedgerow and then they're going to fire on that French column. Yeah. You do your command check. And depending on how well you do, decides how many of those actions you get to complete all right so it might just be i run to the hedgerow but i don't get to open fire the worst one i ever did and i was talking to someone uh, on instagram about this was i i was the idea is not to be too ambitious yeah so i went my regiment of line is going to form into march column they're going to march up the hill then they're going to form back into line and they're going to open fire on those french i formed into march column moved a little bit 
and then was exposed by a cavalry and just got rinsed in, <laughs> in Duncan's next turn. He just like charged them all down. So um, the the James Bond game that I made is I made a thing called the 007 roll, where you roll two dice. If you get a seven, you get to do the action you want to do. And it could oh. be like, I want to shoot that ex um, fire extinguisher. It's going to go down the corridor, pump all the smoke, and then I'm going to run through without being spotted by the guards. Roll a 007 action. If you get any sevens, yeah, you, you do it. If you don't, then you alert the guards and it's all hell yeah, breaks yeah. loose. So, you know, it's gone loud. Um, so, you know, was, uh, I did that game and I made my own, which was like a mix between Battlefleet Gothic and that game system. Yeah. So you had a ship with like, because I'm a fan of Star Trek as well, you had yeah. a ship with like engineers and stuff. And depending on your ship in the Battlefleet Gothic map, where that got hit would affect the actual physical ship that you're playing oh, on yeah, as well. That's a good idea. So you can get cool. boarded, you might have like entire sections to get exposed to the vacuum of space. So you might even have like your Marine Corps in there that are ready to repel board and they all get sucked out into space. So. Yeah, because we, me and uh, me and my pal, have looked at the idea of doing um, uh, a, a, a campaign where you play on the remember the old um, the old Battle for Armageddon board game. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where you'd, you you know you take cities and so on. And we thought we'll start with that. Yeah, and then that will turn into forty k, but then resources or blowing something up that you, your opponent might need to get hold of would drop into kill team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, playing across a number of, of, of sizes. So you play Legion, you play your own. Yep. Your well, own, I've not played yeah. them for a little while, but they're... Uh, might have to do yeah. that on the show one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven, yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Did you double in Second World War at all? So I did for a time, and there was a guy I worked with who made his own rules. Um, in fact, there's quite a few guys that liked... That was the time, early design studio, where we just like come up with rules and ideas, and that's yeah, when yeah. The, the James Bond game came into fruition. Um, but I had a little dabble at bolt action. Not played it for a while, but we've recently acquired a set, so I'll be taking that up again. Good game system. But I did do um, some German paratroopers, Fauschenjäger, yeah. and then some Soviets. Um, but I've always liked the British paratroopers from Arnhem, so I've always wanted to do like an Operation Market Garden. And some of that do you fancy doing for us on the show? Why not? I've got the models at home. Excellent. <laughs> so we're going to... Pat! <laughs> <laughs> we can so, totally do that. So we're going to cover... That's... That's the thing is, although me and Pat have been very, have been very limited to forty k because that's predominantly mm. what we we like, and it's what Pat's got to know from working at Games Workshop, yeah. and it's what I've always I played. I dabbled before in um, the beautiful miniatures, great game, and then the Greek got the better, and was unfortunately was Rackham's Confrontation. Oh yeah, that's beautiful, yeah, yeah. beautiful miniatures, and then they decided to go. Let's not do that anymore. Yeah. Let's do pre playing to plastic, and they were dead within a year. Yeah. And I also used to play Infinity. Yeah, I've not never played Infinity. I've Great really appreciate Infinity, the models. Yeah. But I've always, I think, the gothic violence and horror and sci fi of forty k yeah. is what's always pulled me back. And, and really speaking, what pulled me back after. Uh, 12 years off it was the fact I'd like to find a better way of saying it but Games Workshop groomed my son through scouts <laughs> well yeah, I mean, yeah they, you know he went to scouts one night and came home out of the blue one with a really horrendously painted space and he went I want to play that Yeah, and I actually remember my wife going wants to play what and I went he wants to play Warhammer 40,000 and I actually remember my wife's words being oh. to the emperor <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I mean, I've my... been there once before <laughs> with one man child then yeah. the actual child wants to play it as well so yeah so you know that's what we me and Pat mainly know is 40k through one way or another yeah. but you've got a whole list of things that you can bring to the show well, really, the, I mean my, my journey of miniatures and war games started way before workshop um, and it was like my dad was into Napoleonics and World oh, War really? II and American wow. Civil War I did some American Civil War stuff with my dad and then my brother came back one day and he, he was into D&D &D and he He'd gone to Games Workshop, and I always liked like knights and goblins and stuff because I had Hero Quest. And I was yeah, like, oh, yeah, that's of course. Cool. But that's when it really went into the depths of like doing fantasy based stuff. You know, you got like gun lines of like British redcoats versus French and stuff like that. But having dragons sweeping around and like undead cavalry, that was something a bit different. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I mean, we really got into that, and I think that has taken over my life quite a bit over the, like the last three decades, um, which is great because I mean, I've got a f it is a great company to work for and it is a great company when it comes to like the miniatures the the effort that goes into to making the models and, and mm -hmm. the books i mean yeah sometimes we can argue about some of the rule systems and this that and the other but you know everyone makes mistakes everyone's human but 
for a lot of, I guess, my painting as well, hence at the minute, I'm still very used to the Citadel painting system, Citadel paints. Yeah. As time goes on, we've, we've experienced with some recent painting guys, I've used this paint and I've used that paint, that's new. Yeah. Dirty Down Rust is my new favourite paint. It will be <laughs> for a long, long time. Just like one paint and I just stick it on and I use a hairdryer and it does all the rust effects I've ever needed. Why do I need and, four and paints for and this? This must be an... Because obviously, Games Workshop is a massive part of your life. Yeah, yeah. And you made the decision that you decided, which is an extraordinarily brave decision that after 20 odd years... crazy, yeah. To, 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 to cut loose from there and, and go on and, and decide to allow you your imaginative process and, and the things that you're interested in to be to be seen on a greater level than yeah. what you, you know because instantly when you left and the first thing that turned up on on your instagram page which i think was was probably something star wars yeah it was yeah yeah people were already going oh wow this is the other stuff that yeah. you do yeah, yeah, yeah so how's that felt for you I, it felt weird at first i felt like i was gonna get told off for like posting stuff that's I mean I was quite adamant to make sure you know I'm no I got rid of the warmer TV presenter you know, I don't want you know people yeah. to think that hey this guy's just flouting his uh yeah his all sorts of stuff but no I'd, I'd moved on I'd gone to do my own thing you could argue it may have been a midlife crisis but you know I'd, I'd had my motorcycle when I was 20 so that, yeah, that was well, my yeah, midlife yeah. crisis back so then. Been done, so I'll be it? dead soon. Yeah, yeah, you know, might as well go now <laughs> before they film my death on YouTube. Yeah, why not? As I keel over holding an imperial fist. <laughs> That's a way to go, isn't it? Yeah, well, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it did feel weird and um because I've got decades of stuff I painted. Some weirdly, I don't know why, but some of the really old stuff is slightly better than some of the new stuff. And I think a bit of that is the process which we're talking about long yeah, ago, yeah. which is Back in the day, I was very much like, must make sure these highlights are on there, must make sure that highlight, highlight's on there. And I think as I've grown older, my eyesight's starting to fail. Oh, my I hand's starting it. to get a bit shaky. It's like, I'm gonna adapt my painting to many people that have those similar ailments yeah. and age levels. Um, so there are things, I, I know I can paint to a high standard. I would never say exhibition level, I would never win a Slayer Sword. Not with that attitude, obviously. <laughs> but if I put put my mind yeah, to put, it, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I know I can. Bit paint. of application, PG, you'll be there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I I could spend, and I think that's the the thing as well, which is really interesting. Um, and I've seen it many times where, where an army painters working next to, um, heavy metal painters, there there is that sort of self-esteem where it's like oh i'm not that good and i need to now add these extra highlights i'm like no that's no, not what you do yeah you're slowing you're slowing everything yeah, down yeah exactly yeah and... it's it's about the spectacle of so what you the effort you'd spend into like a slayer sword winning entry or like a golden demon you know gold entry is what you do on a regiment or what you do on a, an army yeah um it's the spectacle of the army not the individual so when i posted my napoleonics recently i was a bit like oh they look really naff as individuals but i'm like it's not an individual it's no, a regiment and, and... Funnily enough, you know, one of the, the ethos of the painting phase for me and Pat has always been, we we always finished virtually, whether it be something Pat's painting on his own or it's we're, we're painting together or it's a 30-minute challenge. We always say, we don't pay for black glass cabinets. We paint for the idea that yeah. this guy will be accompanied by another nine yeah. mates. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny, I, I, in the early days of that, I was saying it, but in my own painting, I wasn't doing it. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's really got to me now, the point where I go, no, these guys are going to be 10 Space Marine intercessors, then there'll be another 10 of them. And yeah. then there might be another 10 of them. I've painted five heavy intercessors, and I really put the effort into them because there's a strong likelihood there'll probably be only them five on the table. Yeah. And them ones should look pretty cool. They're bigger, chunkier guys. Make them look great. And then the other guys, I always think as long as the sergeant looks relatively decent, you you know the, the, my my son's army, which I'm referencing here, they're just spray painted lead belcher and then given a basilicum grey wash. Yeah. And it's that thing of going, my son can't paint at all. So when I come home with these, hero standard for me has been achieved because they look great for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But also it's that thing of they're just metal coloured marines. Yeah. They all shine enough of their own on no highlight because of metal does that. But it's that thing of going, they look good enough, and I think it's. I think you're, with the way you paint, you're that lovely bridge between what me and Pat do. And because and, you, you you paint to a really high level, you paint quick, but you also, I think, paint in a way that people, if watch you, go, oh, no, that's, that, there's things in there I can achieve. Yeah, you know? yeah. 
Whereas, you know, people watch me in pattern, they, they, they go, Daka! I'm not as bad as I thought I was. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Everyone needs that. <laughs> you Thumbs know, we up. do the opposite. We, we paint and make people feel good about this. Yeah, wow. Well, that's good. <laughs> Everyone needs that. <laughs> I mean, another thing to look at as well is, like, I mean, I don't ex ever expect like these high-end painters like Daz Laver or whatever, yeah. Richard Gray, to watch the videos I do. But the stuff I teach in that, if they wanted to get an army done quickly, yeah. there's a lot they can learn well, from that. Even, well, even, even Daz Latham did this, didn't he? Because his, his um, Silver Skulls ended up in the last Codex. Yeah. And he even he admitted, he said, I've painted them in a metal colour because I wanted to have something to play with yeah. as opposed to going about every one of them in, in his standard way that they would have done which would have been, after six months, they would have been 20 Marines with one amazingly painted white leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, so he's gone this thing of going, even he can go to the point, I want to play the blooming game, as yeah, opposed to yeah. sitting there for months painting stuff. And you know how it is with Games Workshop, it moves at such a pace. By the time you've painted, gone, I'm going to paint all of these, there'll have been so many changes and little things will have changed in the game and other armies will be better at this and other games like that. And you go, I spent my life painting 20 assault intercessors and now they're Heresy. in the game. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I think it's that thing of just going, knowing you can paint well yeah. doesn't mean you have to paint well, no, does it? No, no. And I think if you know, if you want to be, if you want to be Billy Big Deviant, you paint everything to a reasonable standard and then you go, but look at the captain or yeah. look at the chaplain or yeah, look at yeah. the whatever. And then, it, then, then you can always just show you can paint your, your painting chops off. Yeah. And you know what we've always tried to say is, you know, we want to help people just accept, just do enough. Yeah. Get it on the board. You yeah. know, bases. You know, bases look great. The miniatures painted. Yeah, as long as you make sure everyone's got the same decals, it's got the same unit markings. I because I it happens to me all the time. I go to I, because a I'm tight. And B, I don't like walking. I always use Warhammer World as opposed to driving into Friar Lane because yeah, yeah. I don't want to pay five pounds for me parking and I don't have to walk across town. Yeah. But it means that I often go on a Sunday and there'll be tournaments on. Yeah, yeah. And I'll walk past an army and you sometimes go, wow, yeah. that looks great. And then when you actually stop and look at it, and I don't mean this with any level of snobbery, you get close and look at these guys playing the army and you go, oh, they're really, really average. Yeah. But you know when you walk past... It's the spectacle, every, yeah. The spectacle of it was yeah. so strong. yeah. That it stop, literally stops me and go wow, and then you go back and you go. Eh, I think for me, it's right. about hitting those beats. Like we we talk about faces and bases, um, yeah. And a, a great example of that was Dave Andrews. So he he is a big historical war gamer as well. He, he it bothers me that not many people know who Dave Andrews is, and he's been in the company for donkeys years. Yeah, he has indeed. He yeah. was the guy that decided orcs should have green skin, which <laughs> I which I don't agree with because I hate painting green skin, but. <laughs> That aside, um, and he's done so much stuff. He's done art. He's done like miniature painting, sculpting. I've probably said sculpting three times, but he, now he does all the plastic forty k scenery. Yeah, um, which is at the moment is the pinnacle of it. You know, thanks, mate. In a lot of parts to to Kill Team. Yeah. But yeah. some of that at the moment is yeah. absolutely amazing. We used to have Ray as well. We used to do stuff with him, but because um, there was an Age of Sigma scenery team in a 40k, and I think Dave just handled 40k on his own. Ray and Steve and May did Age of Sigma, but they've gone off to do stuff elsewhere. Um, but for a long time, it was just Dave, and like the things like the Empire scenery, you know, like the Dreadstone Blight, the Witch Fate, yeah, all, yeah, all those towers was like he would just scratch build stuff, and then obviously they'd do all the magic behind the scenes with like laser printing and this yeah, that, yeah. and then send it off and get physically made. But he's such a talented guy that when he paints, he'd come in every now and again with his like regiment of British for the Crimean War. He'd paint everything with base coats. He'd wash everything. And then he'd just sit and highlight the faces, put a little bit of effort to the base. And you look at it and just go, that's amazing. It's neat. It's tidy. Yeah. But your face is always drawn into their face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't have to. I mean, that's, that's where a lot of like my Austrians are put up. That Most of it's just washed. One colour washed. Another colour not even highlighted like the brown is just thin down brown the only effort i've tried to put in is the face and even then i've not gone too mad little like brown slits or whatever for the eyes just make the eyes stand out and have mm -hmm. a bit bit of definition and a bit of effort on the base and when you've got like 50 of them in a, in a block two banners they look incredible but it's, it's that like you say the spectacle of seeing it and go wow that's that's pretty and impressive you know, like i say you you are literally like an extension of what me and pat do because you you can paint that without that way of big group of miniatures mm. from obviously experience we've already put talked about but in to a really hyper nice finish and like i say your efficiency 
I think is something that's going to come through really well for people who, who watch so. the channel. I mean, that's that's another thing to talk about is like the the theory behind what I want to do. Um, yeah. So we've done a few videos already, um, and my theory is like when you get a box set like Kill Team, we've done a video for Into Dark. Yeah. Um, I want people to get that box set and be able to achievably paint it in a few days. Because a lot of the paint guards we used to do back in the day, if you look at the time scale of, for me, it's like two days worth of filming. I'm quite fast. I've got the years of experience. Um, but for a lot of people, they, they're at school, college, uni, work, parents. They don't Absolutely get much right. time. I mean, as a parent, it's become quite apparent, like certainly for the first two years, I had no time to hobby. Oh, well, you know, well, you know I... <laughs> It doesn't make my barber shop look particularly attractive, but I paint it in my shop. Yeah, I have a one of my chairs. I don't need as many because now because of appointments and stuff because of COVID. Yeah. I have a chair with loads of paint on it, and in between customers, I sit and I paint. Yeah, people come in and look at me like I'm an absolute weirdo. <laughs> but, you know, it gets the job done, and you know, and I've learned to teach myself. I've taught myself to go. I know I've only got seven or eight minutes between now yeah. and the next customer, yeah. but that is long enough yeah. to dry brush this or yeah. on fire base coats and or, boots or whatever yeah. yeah you know and I think it is that thing of I think people forget when they watch some of the real high end painters people yeah. like yeah. the Richard Grays I think it's easy to forget isn't it that you look at them and they paint things to an amazingly beautiful standard one of my favourite Richard Gray did a plague marine close to my heart being one of my arms with a plague spewer it looks like it's been painted onto a piece of canvas it doesn't look like it's a 3D miniature it's so yeah. Yeah. amazing but it's easy to forget that's his job. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's like when people do go, I wish I could look like that personal trainer. Yeah, you know, but yeah. He yeah. spends all day in the gym. That's his job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's I think it's very, easy job, to, yeah. It's, yeah. it's very easy to get your aspirations and your inspirations mixed up, isn't yeah. it? And I, think, um, and I think being able to say to people, do what's good enough. And it never, it's never written in stone. If you do pe yeah. 10 Space Marines and then you do find yourself with a few days off further down the line, there's no rule to you can't go back to yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. You know. I and mean, that's the great thing about the videos we've done is we get the models up to a certain point so you can play games with them. And then we yeah. do the next steps where you can add some highlights here and there. Absolutely right. Um, and I think that's a key thing. It's one of those things that's optional. You don't have to do it, but some of us want to do that. And it's it's a stepping stone. The way I see the, the stuff I do is a stepping stone. Like... You want to get some. You want to play games. You want your army to be painted. You want minimal fuss, not millions of paints. Every paint available, but just enough to get this squad done in two three hours. Enough to get this squad done in two three hours, and the scenery two three hours. So, the thing I've spotted as well is that you um, you did with the kill team uh, for the Into the Dark is that you um, the kill teams I should say is that where possible you replicated paints where I could yeah on, bo on yeah. both on both squads. And again, that is leaning into this idea of keeping it tight because the thing that me and Pat always found was that when we were watching some of the really good painters, it's like you go, well, I'm going to paint this orc. And I would look at the look at the process and you go, because I've got the commandos from the first kill team. And you'd look at it and go, I need to go out and buy yeah. 17 more paints than I already own yeah. to yeah. do that. And I need to take a week off work. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. You know, which my wife's not going to really. No, no. <laughs> to use my military, because she wouldn't be signing that leave pass. <laughs> I'm going to take a week off work, love. I'm not earn any money. I'm self-employed, but I've got them all commandos. I need to get done. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That wouldn't wouldn't be getting a sign though. No, no, so. I don't. Yeah. yeah. If anything, I might find myself on extra duties. I think some of that um, <laughs> that because I've seen that a lot, and a few painters that I've worked with like use every yellow available, and I think. When I was in the army painting team, we used to do these paperback paint guides, um, and they used the intention was they were to be released when the codex came out. So yeah. we did like the Sons of Sanguinius and uh, the Gangs of not the Gangs of Camorra. I think it was like the the Forces of Camorra, um, which based when the codex came out for like Dark Elder, we had this paint guide and we yeah. picked like the main faction like the Black Heart, but then we did some other peripheral stuff, and I did uh, the Lords of Iron Thorn. Which was like we don't normally see metallic looking dark Eldar, so let's yeah. just do some cool stuff. And you have like a little paint guide, a small army, and at that time I was like probably a lead painter, senior painter, not the manager, because um, it was like a crossover of all the teams merging together. Um, I think Pete Foley used to call me like Top Gun uh, for, for for laughs. Um, but one of the things I noticed was you'd have like 
one painter would use this yellow, another painter would use that yellow, another painter would use that yellow. Um, because sometimes we'll have the same painters doing, where prof preferable, you'd have like one painter doing a, a, a faction or a, a colour scheme, yeah. and then they do it themselves. But across the book, there's like a million different yellows being used. And in, sometimes in, in one faction, there's like three or four yellows being used. I'm like, so you've used that yellow to highlight that orange, but you've used that yellow to pick out the eyes. Can't you just use the same yellow? I don't understand why you've used th three different yellows for three different things. Um, and being someone who wasn't particularly well off when he was young and having to scrape paints and yeah, yeah. mix I understand mixing colours because I used to do that a lot. So when you've got a basic paint set where you've got a red, a yellow and a blue and a green here and a black and there and a white there, you learn to, to mix. I avoid mixing where I can because it makes it harder to replicate. If yeah, you do yeah you've got to try to remember when it, you, you? Yeah, when you're doing like one character, it's not so much of an issue. But being someone who's, you know, from a, a council estate, not particularly yeah. well off, um, I know that if you minimise the amount of paints that still make the squads or the army look amazing, um, people will be more invested in that. They get their army done. And as time goes on, they, they don't mind spending two, three pounds on another paint once every now and again, once every now and again, which is why I, I tend to default to certain colors a lot like Black Legion, this particular gold, that particular silver. Because yeah. if I start like suddenly randomly going, I'm gonna use this silver a lot more, the people that watch these videos are like, well, that's a new silver I need yeah, unnecessarily. Yeah. And you, you're tripping them up on, and yourself yeah, to some yeah, degree, aren't absolutely. you? Remember. And, then, and I think as, and colour, you know, because colour theory goes through, always, always evolving. There is something to be said for this at the moment, isn't this? This belief in what they call a, a mother colour, where you have having like one colour and you blend all of the other colours that you need through that colour. So there's always yeah, this, okay, yeah. it's like this, this one colour is always there and to some degree, which I think, yeah. you know, it, it, that provides an interesting thing as well. So, yeah, because it will tonally keep a nice, yeah. Um, feel and visual to it but yeah absolutely it minimizes extra extra paint so the big question then this is the one i've been thinking about for ages oh, no. for you big question yes <laughs> big question um and it either for youtube or for which we'll go into it uh, shortly is um the fact that we're going to launch a patreon yeah what haven't you painted that you'd really love to paint? For what the channel, haven't I painted that you'd really love to paint for the channel? Oh, I mean, there's and it so... could be from anything from Napoleonic Street to Games Workshop. But what what have you looked at? You thought I'd love to do that. What would you like to do for for the viewers? So interestingly, it's it. I would say larger scale miniatures. Yeah, and I don't mean like monsters and stuff like yeah. that. I see a lot of people doing busts. I mean, I've been looking at a lot of like three D printed figures that are like that kind of size yeah. or like and I've never really had a dabble at doing like large scale me the military that. modeling as well where you yeah. see like people realistically doing like tanks and stuff because there's down the line I'd like to do World War Two. Yeah yeah um, there's a box set come out called Gentleman's War which has got like British uh, desert rats, Africa Corps. Mm -hmm. You get a couple of vehicles in that set and it's like I want to go that next level because I think for me with the painting phase it's not just me teaching you how to paint I'm also going to learn stuff as well I've yeah. never used this paint before I'm dirty down rust go back onto that Pat showed it me I was like have you tried this before I was like no apparently you heat it up I was like cool <laughs> and I and within like a couple of night, nights of just playing around with it I learned a load of new ways I'd like to use this paint. Yeah, because initially great. I just applied it straight from the pot heat it up gave a nice effect I then found if I thin it down with water, yeah. taint the whole lot and whilst it's still wet get dabbles of neat paint it gave me a different effect and if I did this effect on that panel and then I did that effect on that panel you get more of a natural looking rust and for me that was like life not life changing but I was just like well, it's cool. something you I can do some new stuff it's now. It's something that with you having, oh, let's use it sounds dramatic to use the term shackles. Yeah. But, but being shackled with the Games Workshop yeah. system because of... It's my, well, work. I work for a company. They sell certain products. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. there's been many times where I used to get slated on like Facebook because we could only use products we sell in the shop. Yeah, of course. So when it came to applying decals, we don't have Microset and Microsol. I like using Microset and Microsol. I've used it loads when I've done my own decals, but yeah. we, we don't sell that. No. So I have to show the way that I... The only practical way we can do with the products we sell, which is gloss the shoulder pad, apply the decal, gloss it again to seal it in, yeah. then matte varnish it. The best matte varnish I've ever found is thin down PVA glue, but we stopped selling that as well. So, um, And that was like Anya from Heavy Metal because we were doing Imperial Nights at the time. She's like, oh, PVA, it dries really matte when it's thinned down. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was like, because if you apply it really thickly, it's quite shiny because it looks like water. But thin down, so it's like looks like milk. You apply it on, it just 
really mats down and it gets rid of any sort of like weirdness. There's no streaks, like sometimes with Lamy Medium it can be quite streaky. Contrast Medium as well is quite matte, it's quite nice. Uh, that's the, the, the newest one I use. But, but yeah, so even then it was like you were restricted to what you could do, yeah. but that makes sense because that's all we sell. And if we sell micro, uh, our equivalent of Microsoft, I keep, I keep saying our, I don't know anymore. <laughs> it's still there, it's still there, I'm still there. 20 years, we've got to get that, we've got to get that out. Sorry, don't worry, you can keep saying it because we'll launch our own soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely, I'm sure. But yeah, so learning like new styles of paints, I mean, there's, there's Vallejo out there, there's... So you're, you're have you been into uh, Element Games in Nottingham? I've not, no. It's... Your head's just going to explode when oh, yeah. you go in there. It's I mean, going to be... The That's two places I've been is Warlord Games and a place called North Star Games. And yeah, North yeah, Star is like a distributor. But yeah. they, they didn't mind us walking in and looking. I was yeah. always blown away because I was like... Because another thing, um, we were talking about stuff I'd like to play. There's a set of rules come out called Baron's War. Oh, right. Uh, which is medieval feudal during like the... Uh, I think it's King John when he... The whole Magna Carta. Yeah, 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 yeah. With, like All the barons coming together. And it's just... For me, it's really fun just painting a knight with heraldry and a bunch of retainers with that heraldry yeah and so i used to play a, a board game called cry havoc it's quite an old board game yeah and you'd have like scenarios and stuff and you have like a character like let's say sir roderick and he'll have like a cool coat of arms you've got a little cardboard token of it you flip him around he's stunned so you have a stunned <laughs> version but then you get a wounded version you flip it around he's dead yeah and i want and i had this concept of like making like that same character in different degrees of being battered up to the point where he's actually dead so you play the game like there's the dead Sir Roderick there's the slightly wounded Sir Roderick well so. the, the spoilers you've done a bit of that for us for Kill Team as well haven't you oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I had a bit of fun doing that yeah. so uh, thinking about that before we wrap up um, what do you think that you, you've like so far with regards to what we do that has really made you excited about joining us really uh, Sounds like a real interview it's, question. That it is, yeah, but it's a good one. So there's there's a, there's numerous things. Firstly, I mean, I, I slip into formality when I'm doing presenting. Yeah, but I don't need to. I can be yeah. free. I can be conversational. Um, one of the things I've, I've really enjoyed, which I couldn't really do before, is I can explain a process and a paint, but also at the same time go. But if you've got any kind of white at home, it will do the job. Yeah, because it doesn't have to be that white. No, I use that and, white and, because. And it, I used it all these years, and it's a good white, but white is white. <laughs> and not only that, the worst thing, I know it sounds terrible to say, but there's better ones out there, there are, as well. Yeah, you know, yeah absolutely. So. I mean, you know, I, I know for well from talking to a lot of high-end painters that don't work for a workshop that this particular black's the best black, that particular white's the best yeah, white, yeah. this particular silver is the best silver. Yeah, oil paints. And yeah, stuff yeah. Else. So, I mean, you can be free about that. I, I can... Although some of the styles, and I spoke to Pat about this a lot, it's like I used to do battle readies and parade readies. But the, the problem with those is they're very formulaic that you can't go outside the lines. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you, like with a battle ready, you want to spray a model, wash it completely, dry brush it, and then base coat the rest, then wash the rest, because that's like super quick yeah. speed painting. And then, although that takes elements of parade ready in there, it's still a battle ready model. But I think sometimes we, we used to restrict ourselves in, in uh, like warmer TV because it's like, no, this is the format we set down. Format sh should work around creativity, not yeah. the way around. Uh, so depending on the model you're painting, depending on the colour scheme you're painting, would dictate how you go about that process. So doing the stuff that we do is like, I will let the model and the colour scheme that we yeah. paint dictate how I, the order in which I do it. Now, you're fast and uh, you're really good. A few people have said that. <laughs> <laughs> including the really good bit because that's where I was going next but you know I'll take, I'll take your word for it you're fast and you're really good how are you feeling and I think you must be feeling quietly confident how are you feeling about when you uh, you get thrown into the 30 minute challenge arena I feel that it's an unfair advantage so I'll paint right handed <laughs> Oh, that's a that's a confidence I like in a, a confidence I like in a man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've done. I, I've been so one of the events I used to like going to is Salute. I've never, yeah. never been to Salute. Really no, good. no, not yet. Uh, and sometimes it was always like shunned upon because you're like, oh, you've gone to this uh, place where it's historical war. It was like, yeah, but that's what we kind of started off as a business. Yeah, really. absolutely right. Yeah. Um, I always felt a bit bad, but it was so much fun. They used to do like little. Um, I think it was War Machine had like a speed painting competition. Yeah. And I won. <laughs> and I felt really bad. I was like, that's the only time. I, and this is a, a thing I, I've said to a few like people in my position when I used to work for Workshop as a, as a painter. Like, and Duncan pretty much followed the same mantra as well. 
which is I, you should never and not should but don't enter competitions because it's a lose-lose situation so like painter competition now that i don't work for a workshop i probably might enter golden demon if i really fancied it yeah, but, yeah absolutely but the problem is when you you're a, you're a face of games workshop and you're considered like like duncan was like the the painting i guess guru yeah if you entered a competition and lost that looks bad yeah if you entered a competition and won Oh, of course you're going to win. Well, you're definitely right. I think you can pay from right hands to death. <laughs> yeah. I think so, so, like, doing those competitions, I felt bad. I felt I like think it was what we might do, so. me, and, me and Pat have talked, this before, or talked about it before. That might be, um, we've got some, uh, there is other painters out there that we'd like to do some collabs with. So, um, me and Pat might just run a couple of ringers and we'll just sit out and we'll uh, we'll put you up. Like We'll actually sit there like, like Roman gladiators, Roman emperors with gladiators. So <laughs> might put you you to know someone. who I want to paint with? I'd love to paint with a painting coach because oh, he's, he's got he's got the same kind of mentality that I. Yeah, have and he comes across a really lovely guy. Oh, and, yeah. and if he's if you're watching, he good on you. He got a he got a pin. Yes, in yeah. He got a pin in, um, stuff earlier today. So his black template squad that look really really nice. Well done, man. So just finally to say. Thank you very much for coming aboard. I'm yeah, really for looking me. forward to seeing where it goes. It's going to be really <laughs> it's exciting. It's going to be mad ride. Oh, it, it, <laughs> you don't know the half of it. Well, Again, thank you very much for coming on board. Thank you for having us, Jeff. And oh. Pat. Yes, to Pat behind the camera today. Right there. Naked, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> There's a camera just in the perfect spot. Oh, yeah. But he, just, he, just, he, he just always does it. And he just I, manages to get it just level. And I, I don't know why he asked us to oil him up beforehand. I don't know what that's about. I don't know. It's sort of about inspiration. I don't get it. I don't get it. I just accept that he knows what he's doing. And, you know, his little quirkism. We call him in my house patisms. <laughs> just let him get on with them. So... I've been Jeff, and I hope you're all excited about seeing Peachy as I am and what he does going forward. Thank you very much for watching. Keep subscribing, and we'll see you in the near future. Bye.